everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with a new McCormick's food coloring. The McCormick Color of Nature line. So most of the artificial food colorings that we use here on the channel are acid dyes. Well, actually, they're all acid dyes, and they bind to yarn in the same mechanism that Jacquard acid dyes, Dharma acid dyes, etc., bind to the yarn. And so we are able to get beautiful, bold, permanent color. These food colorings are based on plants and other foods that you find in nature. So the colors that you get um, are naturally occurring compounds, but they're not necessarily acid dyes. Therefore, I don't know if these colors will permanently stain these yarns or not, and so that's one of the things we're hoping to see today. I am going to dye 200 grams of yarn with these three colors, a yellow, a blue, and a pink. Um, one of them is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. This is 100 grams of 100% Peruvian Highland wool. We're also going to dye some sock yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The stroll fingering with acid dyes takes up the dye faster than the, um, the non-superwash yarn. And so I sort of wanted to see a little comparison and see if there's much of a difference with how the colors strike to one another. I'm planning to apply these dyes. These dyes come in dry. Um, they're, they're in packages and they are dry powders. And I want to sprinkle these powders onto the yarns when they are wet in a solution with vinegar and water and see how the colors strike. I'm not expecting us to necessarily get speckles because the colors might take a little longer to absorb, but we're going to play with this and see what we can get. I am using this pan and I started off by adding some warm water and I'm now going to add four tablespoons of vinegar. That's four healthy tablespoons. I am planning to add some more water too, but I just want to get the yarns in here and get things starting to warm up. I'm starting off with pretty much double the amount of acid I might normally choose. And that is because I really want to make sure that I don't say, oh man, I should have added more acid at the beginning. I want to start at a level that is higher than I normally begin with. And then, you know, if this works well, then we can always try less next time. And that's just a bit more tap water. Now I'm going to add these yarns. These yarns are currently dry. I will, I don't mind it being a little dry and getting some potential variation of color, but okay, the water is starting to get warm, <laughs> which is good. That means that we're about ready to add our dyes. Um, this is low-ish immersion, not quite totally low, but um, I am really curious what the depth of color will be. Ah, that pan was hot. <laughs> um, the water is not that hot, but the, the pan is getting hot. So I'm going to grab some tongs and continue there we go, to submerge our yarn. All right, and I'll be back in just a minute. Here are the ingredients of our natural colors. Um, the red looks like it comes from beet juice, um, which I know some people use to dye yarn. And the yellow is from turmeric, which again will dye some yarn. I'm not sure what trellose and spirulina, um, if they will lead to permanent color or not, but the only way to find out is to try and see. Since the blue is the color I am least sure of, I am going to sort of add it to the middle of our yarns. And so it looks like I've used about a quarter teaspoon of this blue food coloring on the yarn so far. Sort of poking that in and I'm going to get some of the next color. I'm going to reduce the heat a bit. I'm going to do some of the red, which, ooh, it's like a hot pink. So, add a little more. 
That is cool looking. Hi, right, so we've got some pink. I think I'll add some more blue in a moment, but so far, so far the colors look good. Whether or not they'll stick around, I don't know. Um, the reason why I'm adding adding these colors, and I'm, I'm not measuring very closely, so I added at least a quarter, I'm added, trying to add at least a quarter teaspoon of each color. Um, but since the spoons are different sizes, that might mean I did need different amounts. I'm curious about the blue. I'm expecting the yellow and red to sort of stay, you know, to leave some color in the yarn. At least be somewhat better than the way the blue will. And that's why I put them on either end. Now I might have clumped my colors because of the steaminess and going in and out, but um, I am just sort of rinsing the excess off the spoon. But so far those colors look really, really pretty. <laughs> Again, it's just we don't know if they will stick around. But I do have some left over, which is good because these are expensive. But I am adding a lot more blue. I think that the, the other colors are way more potent than the blue. Um, yeah, and so, okay, I am going to give this, I'm going to reduce the heat a little more again. But then I'm going to give this five minutes and then we will come back and check in. Five minutes have passed and I am curious about the color penetration. So it looks like, okay, there's still some white sections, but a lot of that pink has absorbed. Interesting. With the blues, from just looking at it, it looks like that there's little like particles that are still on top and I don't think it's that it's color that is undissolved as much as it is um, as it is just little, there's like little specks that sort of move around. So I'm not sure how tight those are, um, you know. And of all of them, it seems to have the least intense color. The yellow is vibrant and we've got color penetration all the way through. And there's definitely, definitely, of course, and I'm moving it as I'm looking over it, some yellow that is that remains sort of in there. So I think I'm going to need to let things sit, you know, for a while and see if we exhaust some of this yellow or not um, before potentially adding some more blue, flipping the yarn and maybe adding some more blue down there. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to let this go for another 10 minutes and then come back and see what we've got. So it has been about a total of 15 minutes. So I added the dye and yeah, there's still some yellow back there, but it seems like a lot of the color might be in the yarn. So let's try <laughs> flipping this um, with the understanding that this could result in some weird coloration. And actually, that water looks pretty clear. And I was nervous about the color penetration on the opposite side, but I'm not seeing a ton of white here. Um, I mean, there's very, very little blue compared to the other colors, but I don't think I'm gonna add any more dye. I'm actually gonna turn off the burners and let the fiber cool completely in the pan so then once it is cool we can wash it and see how permanent these colors are. The dye bath has cooled completely. It looks like the water is clean or is clear I mean. So I'm starting to get optimistic that we are going to retain a lot of color in these yarns. I am super, super curious what's going to happen when we add some new water here. <laughs> there we go.
I, mean, I definitely expected the yellow to work because I know that a lot of yellow spices can stain rather badly. But if the beet remains pink, then that is going to be awesome. Okay, so I see some blue coming out straight away. But again, we had some powders sort of in here, so that isn't really a huge, huge, huge surprise. But I know that this will make take some washing, but I mean, I'm impressed. I do not know how um, like wash fast and light fast these colors will be. Um, because they could fade and certainly turn brown, browner over time. But, I, again, I am impressed. I really expected a lot less to stick around. Okay, so now I'm going to add some clear dish soap to see about if we're, we will dislodge any, any of the dye. But I like to try to keep my hands oh dear. There we go. In the skeins. Alright, I'm starting now that we added the soap, it looks like some yellow might be coming out as well. Well maybe not. Maybe it's just mostly that blue. I mean maybe some yellow. It's looking a tad green. But compared to the depth of color that is in these yarns, the amount that's coming out is almost negligible. And I'm sort of obsessed with this pink and the model from using the beet powder. I mean, these colors did not strike anywhere near as fast as um, acid dyes or food, uh, the artificial food colorings would have found. Because then, if we had used artificial powdered food coloring, I would have expected to see like the specks pretty much stay in place versus spread out and give us these deep yellow sections with penetration all the way through the skein. So, yeah, but I think, I mean, look at that yellow. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous yellow. You can see that there is very, very little blue left now compared from where we started when it was a lot more intense. Some of it was overtaken by the yellow, but it really seems like the blue is what is washing out. And I think if we had been using artificial blue, we might see some blue bleeding, but then usually there is something that remains behind. So anyway, I'm gonna keep washing these and to get the water to run as clear as I can, and then we will hang them up to dry. Overall, the two different types of yarn absorb these colors in a very, very similar way. In both the Superwash Nylon Blend on top and the 100% wool on bottom, the coloring from the pink coloring from beets sort of gave a really cool splotchy color because we added the food coloring onto the yarn while it was still dry. The yellows are equally as intense on both of the fiber types, but the color is a tad bit more even on the 100% wool, which is, again, the skein that's on the bottom. And our blue! What little blue was left when we washed the yarn basically disappeared completely as it dried. So, can you use natural food colorings to dye yarn? The answer is maybe. <laughs> if the natural food colorings are made out of something that happens to dye yarn anyway, then it should work great. I know that there's people that use turmeric to dye yarn and other fibers, and they use beet juice to dye fibers. So I had a feeling that those colors would work. It was the blue that I was a little hesitant about. Now, it's possible that we could intensify all of these colors if we were to use some kind of mordant along with our dyeing. And that's something that I hope to play around with in the future. There are a few hints of the blue spirulina, which is a cyanobac from a cyanobacteria, um, that remain in the yarn. 
but I don't really have ex expectations that that will necessarily stick around too much. But you never know, that little bit of a blue hint could be here to stay from a region where the food coloring was really concentrated on the yarn. Ultimately, if you want to dye yarn with something that isn't intended as a fiber dye, um, it's best to know that you are taking some risks. So before you dye a large volume of whatever your yarn is, it's worth doing a tiny bit. Now, I am thrilled with the way these yarns came out, but I was approaching today's video as an experiment. So I knew that, and I was curious to see what would happen, and so I knew that I would enjoy the results. But I thought it's good a good time to have a reminder that if you aren't wanting an experimental result, then test out your dye on a tiny swatch of your yarn before trying the whole thing. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. If you would like to support us in a more personal way, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link to that in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.